Welcome everybody uh, to this uh, one of the first, the two first sessions of uh, uh, paper presentations of the PSCC 2020. My name is Louis Wienkel and I'm glad to be the chairman of this session. Uh, in order to avoid to be too late, uh, I propose that we start uh, right now. And uh, so I will give the floor to uh, Zara Rainpur, who will make uh, the first presentation. Uh, the paper is entitled uh, Act of Critic Learning for Optimal Building, Energy Management with Phase Change Materials. And, and uh, Zara is a PhD student at the University of Sydney. Uh, and her uh, research interests are uh, applying principled AI, optimization and machine learning methods to solve large scale and dynamic allocation, scheduling and queuing problems. So Zara, you have uh, 15 minutes to make your presentation. During the presentations, the attendees can use the Q&A facility to ask questions already and uh, I will uh, then uh, select some of these questions uh, uh, when you have finished your presentation. Okay. Hello everyone. Uh, thanks to Luis for the introduction. First of all, I want to uh, talk about the motivations behind this work. More than 50% of energy usage in buildings is just for heating and cooling of the building. And buildings itself contributes to 20 to 40 percent of overall energy consumption. Because of this, space heating and cooling has got more attention uh, these days as a flexible load for demand response. To use this flexibility for demand response, a potential resource that is available to all householders is thermal inertia of the buildings. Thermal inertia is the ability of a building envelope to absorb or release thermal energy. Thermal inertia of the building can be used as a thermal energy storage system to reduce or shift peak load. In this paper, we focus on buildings in Australia that unfortunately they have very low thermal inertia. However, uh, the good news is we can uh, improve the thermal inertia of these buildings. Uh, the new technology to improve the thermal inertia of the buildings is to use phase change materials or PCMs. This material is available in different forms and the common type, as you can see here, is available in a mat. PCM has a considerable amount of latent heat. Uh, storing or releasing this latent heat during the phase change from solid to liquid and vice versa provides the building with sufficient thermal energy to smooth the indoor temperature fluctuations. For example, on a summer day, when we have a solar radiation enters to the building, by absorbing this heat, PCM melts and makes the interior uh, of the building cool. Then during the night uh, that we have a lower temperature, PCM starts to solidify and release the store heat and puts the interior of the building in a more comfort temperature. This illustrates how much we can save in terms of using HVAC system operation hours if we use PCM as insulation in a building. Uh, we can see using PCM in a typical building uh, for a summer months in Sydney reduces the HVAC system operation by almost 33%. In this work, we use PCM in conjunction with the HVAC system. We pre-cool or preheat the buildings depending on the season and off-peak or shoulder hours to use the stored energy during peak hours. Uh, to exploit the energy storage capacity of PCM efficiently, this pre-cooling and preheating by the HVAC system should cast as an optimization problem. This type of optimization problem is classified as a home energy management or HEMS problem. The objective is to optimize uh, the, uh, the, is to optimize the operation of the HVAC system to maximize the reward or in other words, minimize the electricity cost while maintaining the indoor temperature of the building in a comfort range of the home users. 
However, as you can see here, uh, the specific heat capacity of PCM has this nonlinear shape. And because of this nonlinear characteristic of uh, phase change material, for solving the optimization problem, the standard uh, approaches such as linear programming or mixed integer linear programming are powerless. The state of art method to solve this HEMS problem is dynamic programming. To solve the DP problem has to be formulated as a uh, Markov decision processes or MDP. Just a brief uh, explanation of what is MDP. MDP consists of a state which is shown here as SK. A state it contains all information that is necessary and sufficient to make the decision and compute rewards and transitions. Here, a state vector uh, is the values of the indoor temperature of the building. Uh, also, we have a decision variable AK is an action that results in a transition from one state to another. Here, the action vector is a vector of binary values that represent the on and off status of the HVAC system in each time step. Uh, R represents the reward function, pi is uh, uh, sequence of actions taken to move from uh, each state to the next state over the whole time horizon. And finally here, which is a part of MDP, uh, is a uh, transition function, this SM, uh, that governs the evolution of a state from uh, the current time step to the next time step. To be able to solve this MDP, we need to know SM, which is here is thermal dynamic model of the building. Uh, to know the dynamic behavior of a building, we need to model building. Here we use uh, RC lumped model. In this method, each uh, building's element is represented with a combination of uh, thermal resistance and capacitance. The most important parameter here is CE, which represents the total thermal capacitance or, by, or uh, what we mentioned as a thermal inertia of the building. Uh, as we mentioned earlier, we improved this thermal inertia by adding a layer of PCM that is shown here as CPCM. But we need to verify this model. To verify the model, we benchmark the model we have developed in MATLAB against an identical model in Energy Plus. Energy Plus is a software tool uh, that is widely used for simulating thermal behavior of the buildings. Root mean square error is used as a measure to show the discrepancy between two models. As you can see, uh, results show that uh, maximum error uh, in both case of uh, this is without PCM and this is with PCM is under one degree Celsius. Uh, this amount of error is acceptable considering the model uncertainty and also human te temperature sensitivity. Back to our optimization problem, um, the MDP we have for our specific problem is look like this. As you can see, the, if, uh, the reward function includes two parts uh, with different weighting factors to capture both electricity cost and also the comfortability of the home users. Dynamic programming solves uh, this MDP by finding an optimal policy that gives the maximum expected reward. However, we know DP has a drawback that is known as the case of dimensionality. This means the problem becomes computationally intractable by increasing state variable or time horizon of the problem. Therefore, we proposed uh, an efficient version of approximate dynamic programming, which we call multi-time scale ADP, which reduced the runtime of the algorithm significantly without affecting the quality of the solution. In more detail, instead of solving a huge MDP, we divided the MDP into multiple small MDPs and solved them in a backward induction. However, despite uh, this advancement, as you have seen so far, uh, using ADP requires an explicit thermal model of the building. Because of the wide variety of buildings, design, and construction types, developing and verifying the uh, 
uh, thermal model for each individual building is impractical. Also in uh, control problems like HVAC system scheduling, the action is continuous, which makes a direct application of methods like uh, dynamic programming and even approximate dynamic programming difficult. Uh, for these reasons, we propose a model-free actor critic reinforcement uh, learning method based on deep deterministic policy gradient or uh, DDPG for solving our optimization problem. DDPG is the combination of uh, deep learning methods uh, from artificial intelligence with actor critic method from reinforcement learning. The main feature of DDPG is actor critic. In actor method, uh, there is a separate memory structure for each policy and uh, queue or value function. The policy uh, structure is known as actor and is used to select actions and the estimated uh, queue function or value function uh, is known as critic. Uh, the critic must learn and critique whatever policy is currently being followed by actor. In this figure, uh, critique takes the form of temporal difference error, uh, which drives all uh, learning in both actor and critic. In contrast to, the, to this uh, naive actor critic, in DDPG, each actor and critic has a deep neural network structure to model their inputs. Uh, for our simulations, uh, the DDPG algorithm is run for um, 40, uh, two typical weeks or 294 episodes in Sydney. Uh, in more detail, each episode represents a day with one hour time step. Uh, to evaluate the performance of DDPG algorithm, we use ADP as a benchmark. Also to get a better sense of the benefits of using DDPG algorithm, we compare its performance to the simple dead band relay for controlling the HVAC system. Uh, to assess the quality of the policies computed by these three methods of uh, ADP, DDPG, and also dead band relay, we considered four measures in, our, in all our uh, simulations. Uh, the difference in the average discomfort uh, level, the difference in cumulative uh, discomfort level, uh, the difference between the cumulative number of HVAC system operation hours and uh, difference in the cumulative electricity cost. Uh, the results are summarized in this table. If we compare uh, first and second column uh, that sh um, show uh, DDPG and ADP performance, uh, we can see that uh, results are very uh, close to each other. It shows that DDPG produce very good quality control policy that are close to the quality of um, com those computed by using ADP. Also, if we compare uh, DDPG algorithm with a conventional HVAC system that operates with a dead band control, we can see a considerable benefit uh, using optimization method like uh, DTPG over this uh, simple dead band relay. This figure shows the comparison of uh, ADP and DDPG for a typical episode that represents a winter day in Sydney. We can see indoor uh, temperature from both DDPG and ADP follow each other very closely. Uh, we can observe almost same number of uh, duty cycles of the HVAC system um, in both cases. Also comparing the HVAC system operation in both uh, methods uh, with the electricity time of use at the bottom of the figure shows uh, the desired performance of the uh, both DDPG and ADP algorithms as uh, they both push the operation of the HVAC system uh, almost before um, 1, 1, of 1 p.m., uh, which is, uh, shows uh, the hours with a lower electricity cost. In conclusion, uh, we use the DDPG uh, algorithm as a model-free reinforcement learning method for energy management in 
PCM buildings. The efficacy of the method was demonstrated through evaluating by comparing its performance with an ADP method that is known to provide the high quality control policies. These results show that the DDPG uh, compares well to the ADP uh, with only just a small drop off in performance. And uh, this is um, balanced against the ability to deploy DDPG in settings where full access to the underlying uh, dynamic of the system is not available, uh, which is uh, typically the case for the HVAC system in multi-zone buildings. As a future work, uh, we will incorporate additional exogenous uh, variables such as inhabitants' behavior as a stochastic inputs in order to improve the quality of the uh, solution. Uh, I finished my presentation. Thanks for your time, and I'm ready for the questions. Thank you for this uh, keeping your time and very clear presentation. So we have a, a few questions, and uh, so I, I'll have to to select uh, uh, some of them. Uh, so th there is one question which is about uh, um, what would happen if you have all these uh, systems installed in in different uh, buildings uh, in terms of impact on the distribution uh, uh, network. Uh, and then there is another question, which is about whether you have uh, compared your methods uh, with uh, an exact solution method, like uh, mixed integer linear programming or nonlinear programming approach. Um, so maybe you can uh, look at the Q and A uh, as well, but maybe you can answer to this question. Uh, did you compare the performance of DDPG with an exact method like MILP or even MINLP? Uh, uh, the exact method we used as a benchmark was, as I said, it was uh, approximate dynamic programming. No, we haven't uh, go for using MILP because it's, uh, you know, linear programming. And also uh, for using, uh, uh, because of the nonlinear behavior of this material, we didn't go for MILP. Um, but we can use MI, uh, NLP. We haven't used it. Uh, but uh, uh, I think it, um, uh, it's not, uh, you know, for the nonlinearity and those equations, I think it will be more complex using MINLP. But I haven't tried it and I haven't used that. I just used um, dynamic programming as an exact method as a benchmark for the DDPG. Okay, thank you. Then there is another question, uh, which is... Uh, about the difference or the advantage of your approach with respect to, let's say, more classical model predictive control approaches? Uh, I think the, the good thing about this is uh, this is a learning algorithm. So it can be easily set uh, for the building. It's not just individual and specific for a typical building and the algorithm uh, can be set uh, in a smart uh, meter of the any building that can be installed. Uh, but I think for uh, that uh, control problems, predictive uh, control problems, um, I think it's computationally uh, also is intensive. Uh, but this method, uh, when you um, run it and the uh, parameters, hyperparameters are fine tuned, uh, then it's uh, ready to go and it's much, much uh, faster than um, those algorithms, which is behind the predictive controls. I think there are, uh, they are, uh, there are computationally intensive. Okay, maybe one last uh, uh, where you could try to quickly answer. It's, it's in a, let's say, in, on the same topic. So the question is, what was the motivation to use a model-free method since you have a model uh, of the system that is performing yeah. well? Yeah, the motivation behind that is we don't want to, for each building, if we want to use this algorithm for each uh, building, we don't want to go through the whole process of 
uh, uh, thermal dynamics uh, of uh, the building and model it mathematically. So it will be needs uh, efforts and also time consuming. And uh, because of that, to generalize, generalize uh, this method, we go um, for uh, DDPG method, which is a learning method and is model free. Yeah, this is the main reason behind it. Okay, thank you. This is very clear. Uh, so thank you for your presentation again, and we will move to the next uh, 